Do you have an overweight child and you just don't know how to help them? Do you struggle at dinner time because it's really difficult to get your kids to eat healthy foods? Are they always asking for the junk foods and you just don't know how to say no? Well, in today's show, we're going to be sharing so many fantastic tips on how to help your kids not only eating healthy, but really motivating them to have a healthier life. We're going to be talking about exercise. We'll give you some fantastic recipe ideas to get them really interested in some healthier foods. And it's going to be a great hour. So thanks for joining us. Thank you, Norm. For Hello, Dr. Me. G. Thank you very much. I can't wait for the show. It's going to be a great show. I wish I had this information when my kids were younger. You know, I think it would mean a lot. It probably means a lot to you at home also. Uh, if your kids are a little bit younger and you're trying to form that palate, uh, for them. Remember that Dr. Janine is going to be online during the show, so leave your comments and your questions in the comments section below. And if you are uh, watching us on any platform, be sure to like and subscribe, click that bell so you always get future notifications of the next show coming up, and feel free to share the show too. Share the good news because it's something interesting, educational, and something we can all learn from. Even though we're talking about kids, I'm learning a lot from this show, certainly, too. And remember that you can follow Dr. Janine on Instagram, at Dr. Janine, the whole word, D-O-C-T-O-R-J-A-N-I-N-E, and also on TikTok, at Dr. Janine. All right, so dangerously overweight children. I mean, this is a growing problem for sure. What are the causes, though, of childhood obesity? Well, I think we have to start with a diet. I mean, certainly the SAD diet, as it's called, yeah. which is the standard American diet, is comprised of so much junk food and kids just simply aren't eating the right foods and and that's you know a lot of people just aren't educated and maybe they don't have easy access to the healthier foods which are more expensive and I mean mm. that's a whole show on its own that you know it's it's very difficult for parents to choose wisely when they're talking about you know trying to feed their kids the healthiest foods that that are possible certainly our kids are lacking in their exercise so they're stuck to the video games and and they're watching, you know, their different programs on online. Not so much television, I would say, anymore. But you know, they're really not as active. I think, you know, when we were kids, yeah. we were out, right? And we were on it's our all bikes. I wanted to do. I just wanted to be out, exactly. out, out, out all the time. And it was a very yeah. different world. And I think, you know, with with being active naturally we're supposed to be active if we look at our ancestors and you know that, that active lifestyle and in different parts of the world that was part of the day you get up early you go and farm you do your work the kids as well I mean let's yeah, <laughs> let yeah. truth be told right yeah. and and then you're burning off your calories and then of course you have a good meal and we just don't have that anymore we have easy access to fast foods and so many different you know types of grab-and-go foods we don't sit down and relax for our meals and and what we do as adults of course that's what the kids are learning and they're they're learning these these bad habits from us and especially when we see that that parents are overweight that lends itself then to the kids being overweight as well so it's it's a big problem it's something that you know I'm so glad that we have this show today that we're going to be sharing all these tips to really you know pinpoint some some healthy things that we can do in terms of helping our kids and and doing it in a natural way. And you know with the pandemic too, I'm sure that that only contributes to maybe not getting as much exercise and having as much movement and getting out more, right? Oh, absolutely. And yeah. you know, that, that has been such a challenge for, for so many families over the last few months. And mm -hmm. I think now we're just getting outside and we're getting yeah. active and hopefully, you know, depending on where you live in the world, yeah. with, with the weather and, and the temperatures that you were able to get out and actually take advantage. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of families took advantage of, of the pandemic and, and being inside and they were you know being able to get out still with their family and do yeah. things like exercises on you know around the neighborhood all the bikes were sold out we tried to get a bike for our, oh. <laughs> for our son the other day yeah. they're completely sold out you can't get them for another year or so wow. because everybody bought them out and yeah. that I mean that's the good news that yeah. I think is very very positive it's funny you know when you when you mention shopping yes. uh, it makes me think of marketing and some of the problems yeah. the issues I have with junk food marketing campaigns geared towards children specifically. They seem to target kids. Yes. And I'm sure people watching uh, would like to know what your take is on that. How does it affect our food choices? 
Well, definitely. Anytime that you've taken your kids to the grocery store, you know, you, you've you noticed that all of those junk foods are very accessible. So it's right down at their level. And it's very well thought out in terms of the marketing and right when you're at the checkout. So this is the time uh, in the store where you're not really moving around so much anymore. But that time where you have to wait, you're putting your groceries on the conveyor belt and your kids are there. And what's in your face? It's all the junk is right there, like in within a hand's reach for them to grab it so mm -hmm. it's it's all done very you know calculated in a calculated way and and that's for good reason right so one of my tips is probably don't always bring your kids to the grocery yeah. store if you can if you can get a family member or babysitter to watch the kids I I don't bring our younger um, yeah. we have four kids at home right now and I don't bring the younger ones to the grocery store I just can't because it's it's crazy and this is something that we talked about in a in a previous episode when we were talking about sugar addiction that it's something that we we just don't do it's it's very you know, nice for mommy to go shopping on her own and not yeah. have to worry about those extra things going into the cart, which we know are not healthy. Um, so that would be one of my tips. Another tip certainly is that, you know, we have to maybe, I want to say, censor our kids and what they're watching because when they're watching different programs, they're streaming different shows online. Sure. There is this huge market now uh, and marketing agencies are using these shows and these, these kids that are on these online programs to really plug their products. And so we see rooms full of candy and we see bathtubs filled with different types of you know, very specific candy. And then next thing we know, I mean, my kids are asking, oh, mommy, can we go and buy this and that? Yeah. Well, I haven't, you know, I had number one, maybe haven't heard of that candy before. And number two, it's like, that's interesting. It's kind of coming out of the blue. Why are you asking for it? <laughs> oh, I saw it on, I saw it on my program and like, really? And this is, this is a huge thing. So I think the, the fact that our kids are watching these things, sometimes we're not aware of it. But it is, you know, subliminally telling, giving these messages that these things are fun and that's what everybody else is doing. So I want to be a part of that, too. And that's part of that marketing to kids in a in a sort of a different way um, is definitely a problem. So I think it's it's something that we have to really consider what we allow our kids to have access to in terms of, you know, um, number one, are you going to say yes, you know, to that candy or whatever it is, that junk food, but but also to limit some of that exposure to where they're seeing this information. I find this really fascinating on a side note technically because it used to be with television commercials yes. you could fast forward through them sometimes depending on uh -huh. your setup. Computer and online services sometimes don't allow you of course. to fast forward or skip. Exactly. Right? Which and is the, good for them. Uh, exactly. That's exactly that's exactly right. And another tip that I would share in terms of, you know, if you are going to and we'll talk about this in, in today's show. If you're going to allow your kids to have the treats, you know, once in a while, which I think is a good thing, and we're going to get to that, um, I think it's important not to always have them visible. So my tip is if you're going to have those things in the house, the candies, the cookies, or whatever it is that, that's sort of the treat, um, is, is not to always have it readily visible. I know with our own, our youngest son, and he, he loves certain <laughs> things, <laughs> sweets, um, <laughs> and it was always at his level. So yeah. in the pantry, he could pull out that drawer or then if we did have them in the house, he easy access, and he was helping himself. And then I thought, okay, I'm gonna get smarter, a little bit smarter here, yeah. and put it where he can't see it. And guess what, out of sight, out of mind, if it's not readily accessible, mm -hmm. then he's having a lot less of it and he's not asking for it because it's, it's not there, it's not in his sight line. So that's another tip that you can use in terms of, you know, maybe curbing some of these things, but we're gonna give some more tips in this in this show today. I like that, that's a good one. That's a really good one, because kids don't always just eat when they're hungry. But going back to fast food for a moment. Yes. Fast food is a huge business. Massive, yep. right, around the world. And nothing is really being done about this issue. How can parents, though, educate themselves on hidden harmful foods uh, and additives, for example? That, well, thank you for asking. That's a great question. And it always starts with the parents. I mean, parents really have to educate themselves. And that's why we're doing this show today, to really share the information so that parents can really empower themselves and then empower their kids over eating and making healthier choices and eating, you know, more healthy foods. And, you know, there's some basics, which we'll yeah. talk about, that we are adding into the diet, but taking some of the things out in, in a nice way that, you know, you don't feel 
feel deprived <laughs> in any way when you can't have your treats. I don't yeah. believe in that, but really educating you know yourselves. And one of those things that sort of blew my mind when I learned and you know doing my own research all the time was that there's over a hundred different names for sugar. Unbelievable. Wow. And this is something we talked a little bit uh, in our last show with sugar, sugar. addiction. Exactly. So if, if people have missed that then they should check out that show definitely. But that was it was such a great show, wasn't yeah. it? Last Outstanding. last week. I mean it was fantastic. And that that's you know it was such an eye opener to me to see um, over a hundred different names for sugar. So whether it's caramel, whether it's barley malt. So when people are reading labels and they're seeing some of these other names, isomalt, you know, dextrin, maltodextrin, you wouldn't think that it's sugar because people are looking oh, I know that sugar's bad for me. You look at a label and you're looking for sugar. And sugar. sugar, oh, there's no sugar, I'm good, right? But no, not necessarily. It could be that there's one of these hidden names of sugar, which is really deceptive in, in my mind. But it's something that will still have that same insulin response, you know, that I'm all about, you know, balancing insulin. Insulin makes us gain weight. And when we're talking about obesity and overweight children, we want to limit our exposure to those, especially the refined sugars. And that's really important right. to me and educating people about that. So mm -hmm. important to know those hundred different names for sugar. That's something that I want you to take a look at the list and, you know, learn it, commit it to memory. And when you are reading labels to really, you know, it should flag you that, oh my goodness that's I saw that on my list or even carry the list with yeah. you right mm -hmm. and say okay that that's something that I learned about on the Dr. Janine show yeah, that yeah. It, it's not necessarily something that you know you want to be putting into your body all the time yeah. another thing it's a big misconception that you know people will often compare for kids especially that having uh, soda or pop versus having a so you go to a birthday party I don't know if you experience this with your kids but Probably. you go to a, a yeah. birthday party and and the parents instead of having pop well we have the juice boxes it's so much healthier for the kids right, right. well <laughs> a juice box has about five teaspoons of sugar no kidding wow and a can of pop is about nine teaspoons so there's not that much difference mm. I mean that is still a yeah. lot of sugar and it's even worse if they if it's a juice box that's not hundred percent juice so right. really watch the labels um, it should always say 100 percent juice otherwise it's inundated with even more sugar that they've added actual sugar into the juice and sometimes it's not even juice it's just yeah. flavored water with a lot of you know to make it look like juice so Again, education is what it's all about for parents so that they mm -hmm. really become more knowledgeable and know how to make those food choices and teaching your kids how to do this too. So teaching yeah. kids how to read, you know, our, our he's now 11, our 11 year old um, in school just in this past, you know, at home the last few weeks, mommy was helping a lot with the homework, right? Because yeah. all the kids were home. I bet. And, you know, that was one of the assignments was to learn how to read the nutrition labels, which I thought was fabulous that, you know, the, that this was part of the curriculum now, at least here in Canada, that the kids were learning how to read the nutrition facts and see mm -hmm. how many grams of sugar and something that's seemingly healthy, not maybe so healthy, and really looking at you know the macronutrients, the carbs, the fats, and the proteins in a food was was very interesting. So I, I thought that was fabulous, and you know the they did an, an example of an exercise with cereals, and I, I have a huge issue with the breakfast cereals. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, as yummy as they are. And I used to love them as a kid, too, yeah. and the same ones are still around. But they are just so loaded with sugar that wow. it, it's crazy. It really is crazy. And not to mention that there's a lot of synthetic vitamins, again. And anybody who knows me, you know, whenever I talk about vitamins, that <laughs> I always prefer whole food vitamins directly from nature. Yes. Um, I think there's definitely a need to supplement the diet often with, you know, whole food nutrients, absolutely. But synthetic vitamins is something that I just don't agree with. And, yeah. you know, you can watch other videos on that, <laughs> um, you know, for, for more information on on my stance on that but really important to know that yeah these cereals they're they're trying to look as if they're more healthy and you know added nutrients added vitamins and things and they're always synthetically made and it's not always the healthiest thing hmm. that our kids or or adults should be eating either and and just the amount of sugar that's in these breakfast cereals is absolutely crazy so one tip that i would share is if you're going to have something like a cereal you want a cereal for breakfast it should be oatmeal Oh. Just the plain run of the meal, meal oatmeal. And if you needed to sweeten it, I mean, the most sugar that you would put on that was, would 
maybe be a teaspoon or two of brown sugar yeah. or, or maple syrup. Again, natural sugars are always better instead of all these different laden sugars and the different hundred different names of sugar that are all loaded into that, you know, most times a lot of them are loaded into that breakfast cereal and you're just getting just a whop of sugar in the morning and you're actually most insulin sensitive in the morning. So that's the worst oh. time to be eating, you know, these oh. sugary cereals. So that's, that's something that's interesting. Now, the other one is the junk food. So yes. the fast food that kids love, and I have some, I don't know if, you, <laughs> we were talking a little bit earlier about your favorite burger. We won't mention what it is. Yeah. But yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring your world down now, Norm. Oh no. I'm so sorry. Every once no. in a while, I like to indulge a little bit. I know. Are you gonna and take that, that away from me now? The big <laughs> juicy one with yeah. the nice sauce inside. Yeah, I know, yeah. yeah, at that famous restaurant with the drive through and everything, yes. So, unfortunately, those burgers and the one with the sauce um, has a lot of unhealthy ingredients and mm. shouldn't come as a surprise Figured. to most people, yeah. but there's a lot of unhealthy ingredients and it's about 550 calories for that, that big burger. That one burger, yeah. yes. And let's just break it down for a second. So okay. the bun of that burger has, again, the synthetic vitamins which oh. is, is not a great thing. And to be able to preserve the bun itself, there's something called datum. So D-A-T-E-M. And this is diacyl tartaric acid esters, which is synthesized from chemicals and not the healthiest thing, in my opinion, to be eating or to giving, be giving to our kids. And a study done in 2002 on rats actually showed that it may lead to adrenal overgrowth, which is the stress gland of the body, and heart muscle fibrosis in oh, the rats. Oh, no, okay. Yeah, so just, just so that people are aware, there's also in the bun, so we're just talking the bun, we're not even at the other yeah. parts of, of that burger. The ammonium chloride is one of the ingredients in fireworks. Really? It's also in the burger bun. Great. Yes. As well as ammonium sulfate, which is an artificial fertilizer in industry. So that's just the bun itself. So yeah. I have issue with that. Now, the beef patty is the beef that is, you know, overproduced and the health of the cow and the cattle, we question that. So that's another aspect, certainly. Hmm. Uh, when we get to the sauce, so yeah. that secret sauce that's in there, it has over five different types of sugar. Really? So when we look, wow. Yeah, so when we look at our list, yeah. the sugar is listed five times if we break it down. Holy cow. Just in, so oh, to no, speak. So. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So no wonder it tastes so yummy, yeah. right? Um, the other thing is that there's propylene glycol alginate, which is a thickener um, and <sighs> has led to diarrhea. I'm losing my appetite here. In Go on. Some, in some people, and this is something that I, you know, rarely when our kids had this big, you know, especially when they were younger, yeah. they would experience a lot of gastric distress. And I thought, oh, maybe it was bad or maybe it was an off day for them. No, mm -hmm. it was probably because of all these preservatives and these you know, non-nutrients oh. in the food, which you think is just a burger, it's not a burger. Now here's the thing, what is the worst part? I quizzed somebody else in the office today. What's the worst part of- Of that particular burger? Yeah. I would have guessed probably the, the meat pad. Now I don't know, I would think the meat. The burger part. No? What's the worst part? <laughs> the pickle. What? The really? The pickle. Okay. The pickle has aluminum, so it's called alum, and to keep it crunchy, they use the aluminum. Can you believe it? How can they get away with this? <laughs> Good question. Good question. Well, I think when people stop eating them, yeah. maybe there will be a change. But is that ever going to happen? No. And that's my whole wow. mission is, you know, just to let people know and to educate people more about these things. and 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 actually in our office, because we're pretty healthy people in the office. I'm it sure. made yeah. a lot of us sort of think twice yeah. when I brought to their attention, you know, in the last couple of days in, in preparing for the show that this is the reality of what's in the, and, and it's really made me think for myself as a parent, as a mom, that yeah, it's a once in a while treat, but mm, I'm not sh so sure it's, <laughs> it's really going to be that treat, treat anymore. Yeah. No, to be to be ingesting all of these chemicals. So that that was just... The, you know, when we're talking about the, the burger, let's go to the fries. Oh, S great. So the fries. Come on. <laughs> so when I make fries at home, what do we use to make fries? We use potatoes. potatoes. 
Salt. Oh. And we fry it in. Uh, oil, oil. Oil of some sort. Okay. Exactly. So you would think it would be three ingredients. Yes. There's up to 10 ingredients really? in that big chain. Yeah. And in a lot of the fast food chain you mm -hmm. know, um, outlets for, for burgers and fries, yeah, a lot of ingredients. Okay. So there's things, you know, different types of oil, natural beef flavor, which has wheat and milk derivatives. So I just want people to know because I know we've talked about this before, people that are wheat sensitive or gluten free, that the fries maybe not so safe okay. um, in terms of those ingredients. And there's hydrolyzed wheat and hydrolyzed milk um, as, as some of those starting ingredients in the natural beef flavor, which is actually in the, in the fries, believe yeah. it or not. There's sugar, dextrose. So one of, one of our 100 list of the different names of sugar, dextrose. See, I never there. would have picked a sugar uh, to be in french fries. Exactly. And another one, this is the one that, that gets me, is sodium acid pyrophosphate. Okay, sounds like a scientific chemical or something. I don't exactly. Know. So yeah. if you can't pronounce it, I mean, come on. And that, that's another tip that I have is, you yeah. know, if you can't pronounce a food, you look at whether it's ice cream or it's a burger, or, you know, in, and you're buying yeah. the actual ingredients to put something together right. at home in a packaged food. If you can't pronounce it, if it's not something that you would take, um, you know, oh, I'm going to take a little bit of sodium acid pyrophosphate and sprinkle that on my, on my food. Yeah. If it's not something that you would normally know and use then of yeah. course you shouldn't be ingesting it so just to make people mindful and that's why we're doing the show today is really to open people's eyes parents um, you know and and people that are watching to really educate yourself and and to be aware it's it's one thing if you didn't know but now that we're educating you know you should know these things and and certainly share this video right and and tell and allow people your loved ones share it with so that other people can get the the good information about how to get healthier and how to avoid some of these hidden sources of these sort of non-foods, as I would say. They are non-foods, aren't they? They really yeah. are. Well, we're learning how to keep your eyes on your fries around here. That is for sure. I had no <laughs> idea. And kids generally love fries. That's the other thing, too. So it's so yes. easy to say, I just get them some fries. Give them some fries if they're hungry or whatever. Hey, wait a minute. Maybe we should learn what's actually in those fries, exactly. as you were saying. Absolutely. Uh, remember to like and subscribe and share the video as Dr. Janine was saying, a naturopathic doctor here on The Dr. Janine Show every Monday night at seven o'clock Eastern time, something different. And this week, it's kids health we're talking about, but I'm learning a lot too as an adult, which I'm really glad for. Click that bell so you don't miss another ep episode uh, and get notifications. And remember, you can always check out past notifications like we were talking about last week's show, The Hidden Secrets of Sugar Addiction, very relevant to even what we're talking about now. Follow Dr. Janine, of course, on all the different social media platforms, at Dr. Janine. Um, one thing that I have to wonder about, though, my kids are a bit older now, but for anybody with younger children, how do we actually know, how can we tell if our children are overweight? Well, this is something definitely that you work with your child's practitioner, your healthcare practitioner, and really determine. So there's something called the BMI, uh, the body mass index, and there's different growth charts for, you know, and we see for height and weight, but for the BMI specifically, this is not the end all be all sort of definitive way to, to check if a child, because there's, there's variance, right? And some kids grow faster than others, and they'll go through a growth spurt, and we know that they go this way, and then they go up, and then this way, and then up. And so this is, it is a variable thing, um, and it's not the end all be all test or, or marker for, but for instance, when we look at BMR charts, we can see, you know, based on height and weight that it gives a BMI, and then that we can look in terms of, you know, girls or boys at where they sort of sit with their BMI on their percentile. So it gives us an indication. I mean, I say if you look at a child and they look obese, then they're obese. Right. I mean, let's, and, and I think we're in a culture now um, where everything is so padded. So we're so mean? padded, mean? meaning that we're very protective of people's feelings Got it. And, we're, and we can't say what we want to say and that that would be considered rude and in different I've traveled to different parts of the world and it's very different in different parts of the world if somebody's fat you tell them they're fat wow right <laughs> and, they, and that's you're supposed to yeah and I think that paddedness is has done a lot of negative things in in a certain way we've become oversensitive you think I think a little so. bit 
that's my personal opinion. Okay. You know, if yeah. if somebody needs to work on something, then yeah, yeah they're working towards it. It's not going to happen over, <laughs> overnight. And we know with weight loss, yeah. and whether it's in children or, or adults, it's not going to happen overnight. It's a process, absolutely. But as long as somebody's working towards it and, and to sort of, and this is where it gets a little bit tricky with the parents because if the parents have difficulty with maintaining a healthy weight, healthy lifestyle, exercise, proper diet, and, and of course, you know, that may translate into the children having those same types of, of not problems, I don't want to say problems, but difficulties as well. And and I think it's it has a lot to do with, yeah, stepping up and saying, yeah, there is a problem. You're, you know, the pounds, the weights, the, the, they, they do say something. And so at a certain point, we maybe have to get honest with ourselves and, you know, with mm -hmm. our kids and say, yeah, there is a bit of a problem here. We're going to work towards something healthier. And that's what I'm all about. I'm not about just weight loss and, you know, doing things right all the time. I'm about finding that healthy lifestyle so that, yes, you enjoy your food. Yes, you know, you do things in a positive in way, but at the same time, working towards something that's healthier. And we know that being overweight lends itself to, you know, high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, diabetes. I mean, this is, it's crazy. And to know that one in four children yeah. in North America is, is, considered obese and and on borderline you know pre-diabetic it's crazy so it's something that we definitely have control over and and we have the ability to have these positive impacts on our diet and it's something that you know if I have a tip is when we're talking about you know changing into a more positive lifestyle um, and the diet is to is to teach our kids how to really have a proper connection with food and to do it in a positive way and to have mindful eating so every time we eat we have to be mindful of what what are we putting into our body is it you know we're going to get to this you know beautiful vegetables that are yeah. nourishing have antioxidants great you know um, natural water to help to hydrate us is it that or is it you know a non-food the sugary snacks and things that give us the pleasure, yeah, and they, you know, we'll talk about the dopamine again in the brain that's gonna stimulate the dopamine. Is it that type of thing? And that's that's probably not the healthiest way to go, but being mindful and making those decisions from a mindful perspective may help, you know, as we go forward to really, to really have that positive impact and having a healthier diet and getting the weight off at the end of the day. I wanna talk about moving, movement, yes, exercise yes. as well. I mean, what are your recommendations for us to help keep our, keep our kids moving? And how do we get kids to exercise? Is yes. it all in the name? We give it that name that people don't, that the kids don't like very much? What do you think? Well, well, that's a great thing because, yeah, exercise, we think, oh, it has to be regimented. We have to, as adults, we think, oh, we have to go to the gym. We have to do this. We have to, it's not that. It's movement. We want to move. We want to get active. We want to get our heart rate up a little bit. So as much as our kids are unfortunately, you know, addicted to the video games and being sedentary yeah. and they don't get the, the same amount of, you know, physical education classes in school anymore. I mean, when we were kids, it was every day at yeah. least an hour right. that we were active, running, you know, recess, recess <laughs> right? right? And True. getting outside yeah. and lunch hour was at least an hour. Like there was so much more physical activity. And now they've got you know the games and and being sedentary so that thumb exercises is about it right and, <laughs> and but one of the greatest things was yeah. tiktok i mean and especially oh. with yeah and the great thing about well, the dancing on tiktok i'm yeah. saying yeah. because not only is it a way for kids and i know kids that actually lost weight during the pandemic because all they were doing was TikTok oh, and wow. learning the dances. Yeah, which was <laughs> phenomenal. So there's a positive side to, you know, what the kids are, are trending and what they're doing. But yeah, dancing is one great thing that I love because you wouldn't think of dancing as exercise, but dancing is phenomenal. I used to dance when I was a young girl and a phenomenal way to burn calories and have fun. So dancing is, is something, if you watch kids, young kids, they naturally dance, they hear some music, they naturally start to dance and it's not exercise, they're dancing, they're, yeah. right? They're expressing yeah. themselves in that positive way. Another tip is, is to really get active with your kids. So your kids will do what you do, right? It's not so much what we say to our kids. You've heard this before. It's not mm -hmm. what we say. It's what we do. They mirror after what we do. Yeah. So if we're that parent that goes out and exercises after a meal or before you wake up, before you eat, you know, the, the food is the reward for the exercise that you've done, you yeah. know, and that meal, historically, you had to work for it, right? And we just have such a different lifestyle. So that, that would be another tip is get active yourself as the parent and you, and you bring your kids along. So whether it is, you know, swim 
swimming or going for the bike ride or the walk around the block, taking the dog out for a walk. Do whatever you can to get active yourself and, you know, the kids will follow and that's a healthy way for the whole family to get, you know, to get healthier and to maybe lose a bit of that extra weight. You know, I think social media has something to do with the next question also that I wanted to ask you. How do we help our children lose weight but not be body conscious, which is a big story. That's a huge thing. Yes. Well, there's a very fine line there because yeah. certainly eating disorders is a big thing and we don't want to ever, you know, impress upon a young young person, uh, a child that there's something wrong right. in terms of who they are right? There's not something wrong with who you are. It's just that we have to get a little bit healthier, especially if they are, you know, clinically have been proven by their practitioner that they are, need to, for health reasons and for other reasons, to, to lose the weight. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. There's no, nothing wrong with who you are, but we have to get a bit healthier. And I think that's the starting point for kids and to have that open up that conversation. Um, another tip is is definitely to empower our, our kids over getting healthy. Let them take the reins. Let them make some some of those healthier choices and learn about the things. There's a lot of information out there on the internet, on YouTube, if they choose to, to watch. So my tip here would be certainly getting our kids involved in the meal planning, letting them make mindful decisions as to what they're eating, absolutely, and, and doing things with the kids when we're talking about empowering our kids around, you know, making those healthier choices and being a part of it as a parent as well, because often what I found, and you can look at families when you go on vacation, if the parents are you know grossly overweight and I'm not judging in any way but if the parents are grossly overweight then usually the kids are as well right. and that's the family dynamic and what's happening so those those baby steps towards getting healthier yeah. and empowering our kids knowing and telling them that you know you are great you're absolutely perfect just yeah. the way you are we've just got to do you know a little bit of of some little changes just to, to mm -hmm. get a little bit healthier to and that weight just will come off so that's a big part of it, I think, is healthy communication and learning yes. how to do that. And you yeah. know what, as a parent too, I've had challenges trying to figure that out too. Yeah. So I totally get that, no judging again. Yeah. But, um, and I like what you said earlier about helping your kids at home through school work in a pandemic and such, learning how to label read, which leads me to how do we encourage our children to make healthier choices. Maybe label reading is one of them, I don't know, but if you have any suggestions for ways uh, you can get your kids to eat more vegetables, I'm sure parents would love to know them. <laughs> oh, uh, absolutely. So here we have here a great example of, you know, some fancy cutouts. So you can use fancy cutouts. Uh, these are heart-shaped cucumbers and red peppers. We made a little basket here, <laughs> you know, just to make it cute and fun for the kids, get them involved with, you know, cutting up and, and making some of these healthier foods uh, in a second we'll be sharing a great recipe because you know we sometimes have to find the healthier substitutes for the things that they all already love and yeah. that's true for myself as an adult I mean I love my sweets I love my cheesecake and we've shared this yeah. before right in sure. our previous episodes about you know finding those those healthier ways to to change our recipes up and just putting healthier and homemade ingredients into our foods and, and less certainly of the fast foods and things is is great but one of the things that um, I find really interesting is that there's this big misconception about calorie deficit and the dangers of buying into you know what calorie deficit is not the only way to lose weight this is something that is is an eye-opener for a lot of people because a lot of people and practitioners have been brainwashed for the fact that calorie deficit is the only way to lose weight so calories in calories out so if you want to lose weight this is what they teach you right if you want to lose weight you just have to move more and eat less and that is the biggest, I mean... <laughs> misconception? Misconception, yeah, you said it very oh. <laughs> politely. That's not where my head was going. But yeah, it's, it's, <clears throat> it's not just about calorie deficit. Yes, that's definitely a, a way to lose weight, absolutely. But it's not the healthiest, and why is that? Because mm. the more that you decrease your calories, the more your metabolism has to slow up to compensate for that decrease in calories. And this is why people don't have success. And kids as well, they cut yeah. their, and I talk to kids all the time, they cut their calories and yet they're not losing weight. Well, why is that? Well, this is why we have to look at the junk food. It's the sugar. It's, you know, too many of the refined carbohydrates, the sodas and, you know, the refined sugars, the candies. Um, 
And this is part of that problem and that insulin response. So mm -hmm. it's the breakfast cereals that have, yeah. you know, yeah, it has so many calories, but it's loaded with sugar. And what is that? What is that impact having on your hormonal system? And this is what people are not talking about. And that's why that whole seco calories in, calories out, simply does not work for the yeah. long term. It'll work for the short term, but for the long term, it is not the way, the healthy way to lose weight and to have a, a proper lifestyle. You can't cut your your calories back to the point. Where where it's unhealthy and that's why you know that's a big message that I have uh, for all those calorie deficit people that you know they and that's the that's their mantra calorie deficit calorie deficit it's, that's not you know always the healthiest way to go and you know first I think too we have to look at the macronutrients so educating people about having the proper and healthy proteins, carbs, and fats. So proteins being, you know, meat, if you're a non-vegetarian, if you're a meat eater, then having some lean, you know, meats, whether it's chicken, turkey. Um, I'm not so big on fish because of the toxicity issues. So I know some people like to eat fish, just make sure it's non-toxic. And I don't know if that's even possible anymore. So that's sort of okay. my, my, you know, guideline there. Um, hmm. As well as if you're vegetarian, you've got the lentils and the beans and, you know, the, the more, vegetarian sources of the proteins right. important healthy carbohydrates so fruits and vegetables i can't talk enough about having healthy raw fruits and vegetables yeah. is you know definitely something you want to add into your child's diet for healthy eating into the whole family's diet and certainly with when we're talking about healthy fats people you know the, <laughs> a few decades ago everything was low fat low fat i want to go go low fat that's yeah. that's not the healthiest way to go we definitely want to have healthy fats helps to keep us full, helps to feed our brain, helps to balance mm. our insulin levels. So things like avocados, nuts and seeds, these are fantastic foods that we have to, you know, have our kids eating. Mm -hmm. um, whether it is, it's maybe it's not a sliced, it's not the avocado toast for your kids, maybe it's the guacamole, mm -hmm. right? And with some, with some healthy, um, chips to dip into that so you've got to get creative you've got to find what your kids like yeah. and when my kids look at something new and they say oh no, I don't like that and I said you've got to taste it you cannot have an opinion yeah. unless you actually taste it right yeah. and yeah. and so that's why we share and we will be sharing on social media a lot of yeah. um, different and fantastic recipes that you know where fries can be a different kind of fries and we'll show you how to make that um, and you know fried zucchini can be a different kind of fried zucchini I mean all these delicious delicious substitutes for our favorite foods and to be able to do it in a natural and a healthy way. I love that idea. You can, uh, you don't have to like it, but you have to try it. Yes. I like that mantra for kids too, with, with healthy foods at least. Well, it's a great tip. Try it. Yeah. yeah, it's a great yeah. tip. Absolutely. So the breakfast cereals are certainly something that we touched on <laughs> a little bit earlier today. Yeah. And that's, you know, a huge amount of sugar first thing in the morning when our insulin is the most sensitive, not probably recommended. What I've heard a lot of, you know, people say and and doctors talk about when they talk about insulin specifically is that breakfast for a lot of people is just like having dessert in the morning. <laughs> yeah true right for people that love donuts donuts muffins you know the breakfast coffee cakes the cookies and things yeah. that's that's dessert that's and dessert. people are having that and i'm i'm guilty of that i used Me to too. do that when i was much younger and <laughs> Yeah. Young, young and stupid <laughs> but now that I've learned about sugar and you know all of these sensitivities it's an insulin sensitivity I've really been able to so it is possible yeah. <laughs> from a former sugar addict to really curb things and and make yourself healthier and and have a healthier body weight when you make these changes but we have a fantastic recipe so my kids love this very famous cereal it has cinnamon it's got the word toast in it. It's very <laughs> crunchy. So they, they love this cereal. So yeah. we actually made that same cereal, but the healthy non-sugar version of it oh. with healthy sugar substitutes. So we're going to take a look at that recipe here. It's a fantastic thing for the kids. I, truth be told, I love it as well. Um, I eat it. I can eat it just like a snack or, you know, have it with milk and it's absolutely delicious. So this is a fantastic low carb, keto friendly, cinnamon spice and everything nice breakfast cereal that you will love. It tastes a lot like that famous cinnamon cereal that all the kids love out there, some of the big kids too. We're gonna blend this all up. So first we have some almond flour as well as some shredded coconut. 
We also have some low carb sweetener. So this is made with monk fruit, which I love. We also have some cinnamon and some pumpkin spice and some butter. We're gonna put this all in the food processor with two capsules of fiber. So this is Vitamucil, this is a soluble fiber made from psyllium seed husk. I'm putting this now all in the food processor. That was my flour. And pulsing gently. And adding in the butter. So preheat your oven to 300 degrees and we're ready to roll this out. So I'm just covering this with parchment paper and now I'm gonna roll it out. This is going into the oven for about 20 to 30 minutes. Delicious low carb cinnamon cereal ready to enjoy. That is so good. That looks so yummy. I can't wait to try that. Oh my goodness. And I'm sure you too can't wait. And in case you didn't get all the ingredients right there, remember to follow Dr. Janine on Instagram, also on TikTok, and different social media platforms, at Dr. Janine, the whole word, D-O-C-T-O-R-J-A-N-I-N-E, for that and all the other great recipes, of course, we've covered uh, in previous shows. Make sure you like and subscribe and click that bell uh, so you get future notifications of the next shows that are coming for the Dr. Janine Show. Uh, perspectives from a naturopathic doctor on all the different ailments and, and things that we're talking about. Kids' health is what we're focusing on during this particular episode. And remember too that Dr. Janine will be online during the show to handle your questions and comments, to answer any of them, so leave them in the comment section below. Uh, remember to like and subscribe. Oh, and share the video, by the way. Don't forget to pass this around. Family members uh, who may have missed watching it, share it with them. Uh, give it as a gift to somebody. How about the new parents? Here's a nice gift to the new parent. A little bit of education for themselves. Uh, click that bell so you don't miss a single episode, that's for sure. But we want to move on with more questions for Dr. Janine, certainly. And I know many parents, maybe you watching, have been asking this lately. How can we help our children stay or be mentally healthy? Because we always talk about the mind, body, spirit, mental health. Well, this is, I mean, is this, isn't this the crux of it all? I mean, when we are mentally happy and healthy, then everything translates into a happier and healthier life. And the same is true for our children. And we always want to focus on the positive. So positive parenting, absolutely. We want to focus on finding all the gems instead of, you know, some of the negative aspects. And certainly when we're talking about weight loss or finding a healthy weight, it's, it's something that we, we focus on the positive, that we're making, you know, positive impacts together as a family. And that's, you know, one of the important things. And, and another tip is is to do this together with the family it's not just singling out that one child in the family um, Great point. Who, who's having difficulty you know losing weight or it could be gaining weight it could be the other side of it we can't single that that child out it's something that we do together as a family to get healthier and it's it's you know it, it comes down to I always say it comes down to the fruits and veggies I mean adding just that simple act of putting more healthy fruits and vegetables into the diet then that often will replace the space of you know where some of those junk foods were and slowly but surely and I've you know helped a lot of families over the years in in my years as a naturopathic doctor that it really does have a positive impact and then kids actually when they start to savor and they actually start to like and become accustomed to eating some of the fruits and vegetables they actually will ask for it and they start to crave it more than they do the junk and and the palate changes so it's it's a it, it is a process step by step but it, it really does have a positive impact which is is fantastic. Another tip that I have for the mental aspect is to get a fancy box and that's called the manifesting box. Oh, okay. And we did this with all of our kids, which we, we thought was so incredible. And what they do is in their fancy box, they're going to put in the things that they want to manifest or what they want to have. So it could be I don't know, my kids put like pictures of like really fancy watches <laughs> and mansions sure. and airplanes and Lamborghinis and all these 
But it could be as simple as, you know, maybe it's a healthier body. Maybe it's the new bike that they want. I mean, who knows? And this is the great thing about the law of attraction is that you can, as adults as well, and I recommend this for adults, not just the kids, you can manifest exactly what you have put into your mindset and into that, that fancy box, your manifest box, which is incredible. And it's, it's funny because I look back at my own manifest box and a lot of the things that I, that I put, very personal things, that I, we, I've been able, or we as a family collectively yeah. have been able to manifest. So the key to doing this though, and this is not what you'll always hear about the law of attraction, is that in order to manifest those things, when you're sitting and you're meditating on the things in your box, which you should do, periodically, maybe, you know, once a day, it could be once a week, depending on how much time you want to devote to this, you have to feel good. So let's say it is, you know, the Lamborghini or whatever fancy car it is that you're driving, you see yourself in that car and you're driving that car and you're, you feel so good and the wind is in your hair and you yeah. get out and, you know, you just feel so good. And it doesn't have to be, you know, as, as frivolous as cars and planes and these things. It yeah. could be, it could be that that bike it could be eating more vegetables in your yeah. diet i don't know it's different for everyone but you know and some people and and truth be told some people have difficulty you know getting the vegetables or for different reasons for financial reasons it's harder to get the healthier foods but if those mm. are the things you're wanting to manifest then put them in your box and it can go a long way for you actually attaining those things I want my own manifest box now. That sounds yeah. amazing. That's really, that really? makes so much sense. And huh? this is something you can, it's a great activity to do with the kids. You yeah. can actually make make one with the kids, you know, and get a just a regular box or even a, a sh it could be an old shoe box yeah. and decorate it up nice and, you know, put those things in or the pictures of the things um, that you would like to manifest in your box. So we've talked about the mind. We've also yes. talked about the body quite a bit. Yeah. How can we help with the health of our children spiritually yes and and energetically which is really interesting so something in terms of energy medicine which is something that I've studied um, over the years and really helped a lot of patients with this is what's interesting about kids is that their intuition is very open up until about age seven and then there's a transformation that sort of happens at age seven so oh. when kids talk about their imaginary friends and they you know they have different feelings or a, a, a young baby will cry in the presence of somebody that just has bad energy and it's unexplainable, right, to the naked eye for yeah. people who aren't intuitive and, and in tune with energies. It's something that, that kids yeah. definitely have those abilities up until age seven. So as parents, we can foster those and, and say, yes, you know, I yeah. believe. I used to talk to my kids' imaginary friends because I, I knew that that was a real thing yep. for them yep. at the time and absolutely that those energies existed so i think we have to foster that we wow. have to empower our kids to to be in tune we're we're more than just you know what we see and and can touch uh we are energy be beings and that's really important to tune into that and when kids you know can get into grounding themselves so going out into the earth with bare feet you know some most kids wear shoes but I like it when my kids are barefoot because they're grounding, they're always grounding with the earth and that yeah. changes the electromagnetism in our cells and that helps to keep them centered. So adults have to do that as well. Yes. If you've ever seen before that, you know, um, more people are talking about it now, which I love, that grounding is just so important as yeah. a healthy part of your day to get grounded barefoot on on the ground to, to center your energy again, which is phenomenal. And, you know, meditation too. So meditation is, for kids, believe it or not, they can often and they do meditate on their own without even any instruction. They just kind of go into a, a quiet place and they just kind of are very centered and and sort of connecting with their own energy and with the energy of the universe around us. So I think that's fascinating and I think the more that kids do that, the more in tune they are with their body, they'll gravitate more. It's interesting. They'll gravitate more towards the healthier foods, the fruits and the vegetables. The, the less in tune they are, the more they're in tune with the electronics and all that, they're less in tune with their actual energetic being, the more they're going for the junk food and all those subliminal messages that they're getting from what they're seeing online in all these places, 
that yeah, there's got to be a shift that's happening. Getting out into nature, you can never go wrong, right? So that's another tip as well, is just get out into nature, enjoy it, breathe in the fresh air, connect with, with everything around you. And, and it's incredible how these small changes can really go a long way in, in your overall health. And maybe if it is weight loss um, and finding a healthy weight, then that will really help as well. We've come to a point in the show that's always one of my favorites, and that is where you tie it all together for us. So we'll do that again this week with Kids Health. What is the Dr. J9 truth this week? So the Dr. J9 truth is really to let kids be kids. And I think a lot of families, you know, have come away from that. We're in a different world now, especially when we were kids. We were kids. We were allowed to run out when the street lights came on. Yeah, that's yeah. when you come home. And we were allowed to explore and do. And, and I think a lot of parenting now has become, in society, has become what I call very padded, which we said earlier today in the show you know, very protective and you can't say this and you can't do that and you can't be, you know, and mm -hmm. I think too much, in my own opinion, I think a lot of that is happening. And a lot of people in my generation, I think, share some of those same views as well. So to allow kids to be kids, and I have a great example, our youngest son, um, and I've probably become more relaxed, more chill, chillaxed yeah. as, as yeah. we've had more and more children, but the, the last, the, the fifth child, um, is yeah he is allowed and i mean all our kids have been allowed to be children but i i think for an example the other day just learning how to ride the bike you know the two wheelers without the training wheels anymore and you know i set a sort of set him up for that those learning stages of riding his bike and i i said you know how, how, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Oh, I'm good. I'm good, mommy. It's like, it's hard. It's hard. And I'm like, no, it's good. That's part of the learning, right? And he was all freaked out about hurting himself and falling. I'm like, you know what? So I prefaced this before he was actually doing it on his own. Um, and I wasn't having to run behind him and like, <laughs> and try to keep up, right? Because as he was learning and trying to balance. And, and I said, you know that falling is part of the learning. If you don't fall, you haven't really learned. So he, in his mind, he wow. was already set himself up to think, I got to fall, right? <laughs> to, to really do this right, I got to fall. So he wasn't scared of it anymore. Wow. And so he, so when he finally, he, we have a little pond by our house and has a bit of a, a hill. I'm like, oh gosh, just hold the brakes, be careful, right? And I'm, I'm freaking out inside, but I'm like, he's got to learn. He's got, I got to let go of that padding. Like, just take the padding off and just let him go. Yeah. So he's going down. Sure enough, he, I turn my head for a second I, uh, to look at the dog, whatever. I look back and he's on the ground. He got up, wiped himself off. Mom, I fell. Are you okay? Is there any blood? Is there any blood? He's like, no, I'm good. I'm good. He's like, <laughs> there's a little scratch, but nothing, like, not nothing profuse. It was fine. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good. I'm like, yeah, good. I said, what? There's no blood? I said, well, that wasn't a real fall. <laughs> he's like, oh. <laughs> so it's just a different perspective, right? Yeah, and yeah. I thought, yeah, you know, that's, that's if, if I had been that way with the, <laughs> with the kids before him, uh, we would have been better off because they're a little bit, you know, they're not as free, I find, in spirit yeah. because, yeah, I, I padded a little bit too much, but I've learned. So if I can share, you know, with, with parents that are watching to, to let them be kids, I think that's the Dr. J9 truth definitely for this week. And you'll be ready for the next one. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No, thank you. All right. You've offered a lot of, and I mean a lot of wonderful tips this week. It's been absolutely incredible to help uh, parents with their kids to be healthier. Uh, can we recap them, though, for anybody who's sort of fast-forwarding or tuning in at a certain time like this? What yes. have we talked about? So to recap, let's go through some of the points that we talked about. So tip number one would be to put the unhealthy foods out of sight so that if the kids and you aren't seeing them, then you're not as tempted to get into them. Tip number two is don't bring the kids to the grocery store if you have the means to drop them off somewhere or to do your grocery shopping when they're, you know, in school. Hopefully the kids will be in school that you can do it at that time so they're not tempted to grab all the wrong foods. Tip number three is to beware of what kids are watching. There's a lot of ads that are subliminally placing different products that are not healthy and some of the junk foods that the kids are going to be asking for. So if you can really, you know, be mindful of what your kids are watching, that will help. 
Tip number four is to make sure that the treats are out of sight and at a higher level in your home. So they're, if they're at eye level, it's very easy to grab and go. So you want to put them at a higher level. Tip number five is if you're having cereal in the morning for breakfast, I like just plain oatmeal, maybe with a bit of milk. And if you're going to have to sweeten it, just add a little bit of brown sugar or maple syrup if you need to do that. And that really helps to control the amount of sugar in the breakfast meal. Tip number six is to teach kids how to have a proper connection with food and to be mindful of what we're putting into our bodies. And as an adult, you can really help to do that for yourself as well. Tip number seven is to get active with your kids. So your kids will always do what you do. So if you're getting active, bring your kids along, whether it is for that walk, that bike ride, and let them get active with you. And that will go a long way into making this into a lifestyle change for them. Tip number eight is to get kids involved in the meal planning and really empowering them over what they're choosing to put into their bodies as those healthy foods. Tip number nine is to help to make your kids try everything, even if they don't like it or if they say they don't like it, they can't say that unless they've tried it. Tip number 10 is to do it together as a family. If there's one child in the family who either has to gain weight or to lose weight, don't single that child out. Do everything together as a family to all get healthier together. Tip number 11 is to get a fancy box, what I call a manifesting box. And this really helps to teach kids to be joyful, to be happy, and to be thankful for the things that they have in their life and the things they want to manifest as well. Tip number 12 is to get out into nature. The more you're out in nature, the more you connect with that universal energy. It really helps to find that balance in your energy systems and in your organs, helps with digestion, but also helps then to lend itself into gravitating towards the more healthy foods in the diet and in your lifestyle as well. And tip number 13 is to really let kids be kids. Kids at the end of the day, they need to explore, they need to have fun, and they need to be in connection with nature and with their environment and just let them be kids. Wow, and I think tip number 14 is for me in that burger that I really like that maybe I don't like anymore. Thank you for that. What a great show. I think you've really helped a lot of parents. I'm sure there are many viewers that feel they're in a better position now, Dr. Janine, to help their children be healthier, which is good for everybody. What's in store for next week's show or next week's episode? So next week we're talking about the hidden secrets of stress. Oh, and how to manage stress, okay. how to do this in a natural way. And we have a special guest, an industry leader in yoga to help to show us some postures that will help with stress. So I'm so excited for that. I hope that you'll join us next time as well. This has been a great hour. I hope that we've enlightened you a little bit about how to help your children, how to do it in a natural way, how to get healthier. Maybe you've learned some healthy tips. Be sure to check out our other recipes and remember to follow me at Dr. Janine, D-O-C, T-O-R-J-A-N-I-N-E and really, you know, you can tune in to the different social platforms to get all of the recipes and other tips and we're constantly uploading new information to really help you on your health journey. And remember to always take care of your good health and to do it naturally. Thanks for joining us today.